We were now three hours and 20 minutes into this program, and football field tomfoolery number two was just about to start. And I'm thinking, okay, at least this thing won't be as long as it was last year. <laughs> That's the only way that they can improve this is by making it not last as long. Boy, was I wrong. And it, Brian, let me ask you this question. This is the first time they've had a complete sellout crowd with fans back in the stands in over a year. And they're showing them this on a big screen in the arena because most of it is not taking place in the arena. So that means that a month ago, they gave away a war games match, two ring, double cage, blood and guts match that they could have had in front of the people live in the arena as a blow off where the baby faces win. And they could have done football field fuckery anytime they wanted, whether there was fans in the arena or not. So they could have done that first if they had to. And the heels could have won that because who gives a shit? Because it's a phony cartoon match to begin with. And then they could have built for a month when the fans are back, we're going to finally show you blood and guts war games. And they did the exact opposite. They had the match they could have in an arena in front of fans on a TV show with no fans and then had a sellout crowd of fans and showed them a tape of a cinematic filmed match that didn't occur in front of them. How much sense does that make? Not very much sense. <sighs> they start with the stretch limo. MGF gets out of the limo. We think the pinnacle are in the limo, but here comes the inner circle entering to Judas, piping in the crowd from next door that can't see any of this because it, 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 and, and singing the song, and they're repelling from the scoreboard. And by the way, the dinner circle is indeed repellent. <laughs> However, they come in, and they walk in like they're in one of the Rocks movies. Did right? you see Jericho when Jericho dropped down because of his weight, I guess? That cord, boom, I thought he was going to go. I'm glad he wasn't on a bungee cord. It might have snapped. Um but anyway, they walk in like they're in a Fast and Furious number 16. And they trap MJF in the limo that the Pinnacle's supposedly in. But here comes the Pinnacle driving in in a pickup truck and the fight starts. You will recall that MJF said there's going to be no comedy in this, right? No comedy. All righty, let's see. They've got a ring set up on the football field, but they used it for about 20 seconds or so. And and basically, I'm, I'm going to spoil this because it was spoiled for me because as soon as I got up and turned on the internet this morning, right before I watched this fucking thing, Jericho has already done an interview where he told the people, the public, that this match took four days to film they hired a stunt coordinator for the fight scenes. And it wasn't even happening next door to the people live. It was a completely cinematic piece of shit. That was just these guys jacking off, making their own movie because some idiot's stupid enough to pay for it. And then he tells them, he tells everybody. He can't even keep up the goddamn pretense that they did this in one take and then came into the arena uh, for the finish. He has to tell them, oh, we spent four days filming this with a hired stunt coordinator. Well, it looked like it because it looked phony as a fucking football bat. And you could tell that this stuff was not continuous. And it was uh, completely obvious that they were just going from scene to scene like a bunch of goddamn frustrated wannabe fucking B-movie actors with somebody else footing the bill. 
Uh, MJF used a fire extinguisher out of the trunk of, of the limo or the car. There were guys fighting in the bleachers, guys fighting on the field. MJF and Jericho go inside into catering. And MJF, Mr. No Comedy, hits Jericho with a phone and then talks on it, say, Chris can't talk right now. He's too busy swallowing his teeth. Uh, but then Jericho screamed at MJF through a megaphone, so of course that hurt his ears. And then Jericho whacked two cookie sheets together over the top of MJF's head, almost hit him. It was close. Um, Jericho and MJF fought forever because obviously the other guys are, it's not their scene. They're not in a scene. And they go in an office and Jericho asks some schlub for a fucking laptop and then hits MJF with it. This, it, it's live action Cartoon Central. And this is following blood and guts. Uh, did you notice they somehow had cameras in every room that they went into before they went into it? Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, so there was no pretense that this was even su supposed to be legitimate in oh, anybody's please. mind. The Sean yeah. Spears scene. Um, well, I, which, which one do you, oh, you mean the fucking spotlight? The, all of a sudden, dramatically, he is sitting dramatically in this room of chairs with a blue spotlight on himself. That was Well, ridiculous. wait a minute. You, well, wait, you missed Wardlow and Hager in the fucking freezer. Oh, I, I did not miss that. And the fake, at least they look fake. I mean, those weren't real pigs hanging there, I don't think, were they? I don't think a goddamn football stadium keeps entire sides of, of <laughs> hog hung up but so yeah wardlow and hager were in the freezer i it's more embarrassingly fake when guys go for wrestling moves in the middle of a fight in a freezer but oh wait a minute i'm gonna boost this guy up on my shoulders to give him my big finish oh wait there's a frozen pig they had referees with because all the guys were paired off. Wardlow and Hager, MJF and Jericho, Sammy and Spears, the tag teams. And there's a referee for all of them. And every time they go through another scene, there's the, the referees with the... And then Wardlow and Hager went through... Could they not even make a legitimate wall? I mean, it, it they went through a fake wall, but it was, you could go through a goddamn... Um, What's the fuck of the sheetrock, plasterboard, whatever? You can go through that as big as those guys are. This wasn't even that. Drywall. Drywall is what I was searching for. It was just a fake wall. What are the building codes in Jacksonville? That wouldn't have stood up to a fucking strong wind. I think somebody ought to call the building inspector. Anyway, but then, yes, Spears was... He's sitting in the in the chair storage room in a chair with a spotlight on him and spooky blue lighting. And here comes Sammy in and they do a bunch of video game bullshit. And it took forever. And you I start wondering, well, go ahead. I was going to say, it's so ridiculous. Like when Mike Rotunda went from Captain Mike of the wrestling team to, well, you're a captain. You might as well be a boat captain. That was ridiculous. He's the chairman. So obviously he's always with a chair and surrounded by chairs. He just loves chairs. It's so stupid. And they do have these rooms in arenas and buildings and stadiums where they store all the folding chairs, but all the chairs are not usually around all the walls with a big empty spot in the middle with a spotlight and blue background lighting. And if somebody did win the match there in the chair room, how would the rest of the guys all over the football field know? Do the referees have walkie-talkies where they could say, stop fighting, the match is over? That's a very good point. We've learned that cameramen are not allowed to say anything. They can never say, help, someone stop, there's a brawl. So they can't right, so, say, uh, you guys can stop fighting, the match is over. There's been so a decision it, in the chair yeah. room. But that, that would take a while for that word to get around. It'd be like in the old days when, you know, in the days before modern communication, people were still fighting wars after the armistice had been declared because they didn't get the news. This could have lasted for two or three days. Uh, Spears handcuffed, he just happened to have him in his pocket, and he handcuffed Sammy to a shelf, but fortunately when Spears left, the cameraman was able to widen out so that you would see the bolt cutters laying near Sammy's feet and the announcer's 
we just happened to see those and comment on it. So we tied up that loose end. Well, we did see him throw the bolt cutter a little earlier in that scene. But the other thing is on the topic of the announcers, and I get it, it is what it is. And we sit here and shit on it. But if you're a commentator on the show, I don't really think you should be laughing at this and treating it like the joke that it is just because your job as the commentator is to try to get it over, try as hard as you might. But Shivani, he just did not give a shit during this match. He's just laughing up a storm at everything he sees. Well, and and the reason JR wasn't was because, you know, basically, honestly, the only reason I think JR can keep from laughing is that the Bell's palsy prevents him from showing that he's laughing. But the verbal eye rolls are just as good. But speaking as a person who has announced in four different decades, on pay-per-view, national cable, network television, local broadcast syndication, whatever, there's no way you could have called this without making fun of it and kept any credibility on yourself. Anybody with any fucking self-respect could not have talked about this seriously. Now, whether that's a good thing or not for the company when your announcers can't even call your pay-per-view seriously, that's another thing, but my suggestion would be give them something they don't have to fucking laugh at openly to call. Anyway, uh, the worst was yet to come. Santana and Ortiz ran into a nightclub after FTR and Tully and beat up a bunch of fucking goofs that were standing around in the nightclub that music was playing in and everything, even though there's a show going on in another part of the arena, this nightclub had people in it. And then Santana and Ortiz and FTR and Tully go stand around a table and all of them take a shot of some type of alcohol together. And then the camera zooms in and shows that Conan is the DJ. And then they just start fighting. This was the hokiest, fakest, phoniest horseshit of the entire night. And I got to say it, FTR, you, you should have stayed where you were. This is the biggest mistake of your lives. Unless you just enjoy, and there is something to be said for it, getting a check to do almost nothing and live at home in the mountains in Asheville, and that's great, but you're done in the wrestling business. The absolute best in-ring tag team in the business, by the time they ever get out of this, they will be considered such fucking negligible jokes. And now they're, they started doing two counts in the disco. Santana and one member of FTR, I couldn't exactly tell who, fought into an elevator. The elevator doors closed and scene. Now we're back to Wardlow and Hager. They actually had a nice little exit for everybody. Either they get thrown into another room or an elevator door closes or something happens to where they can cut to the next scene. Maybe they had fucking Darby Allen directing this goddamn abortion of a clusterfuck too. So Hager choke slammed Wardlow off of a forklift through a bunch of boards or something. And then we go back to Jericho and MJF in a hallway. And Jericho hits MJF with a Shad Khan cutout stand-up. And apparently we see now where the fucking Khan family's heads are at when there is a Shad Khan cutout life-size stand-up in this building to begin with. Glory happy much? Fucking egotistical fucks. Just could... How do people this fucking ignorant that are so stupid they can't find their own way home at night accumulate billions of dollars? They get patents. Uh, anyway, they went in a conference room. Jericho stapled a, a thank you card to MJF's forehead and he cartoon sold it. Yeah, I mentioned FTR being the best in-ring tag team in the business. This guy could have been a modern-day Roddy Piper. I've been saying for the past three years, ever since I fucking saw this guy for the first time, he's a modern Roddy Piper. He's the best heel in the business. He's going to be a fucking superstar. 
He just got a fucking thank you card stapled to his head in the middle of the phoniest fucking, I can't say match, the phoniest fucking horse shit that's ever been broadcast on a wrestling program. He ain't going to be the modern Roddy Piper anymore. They're going to fuck around and do enough with this guy that stupid shit with this guy that by the time that this company folds or just admits that they're Benny Hill and goes completely to sketch comedy and forgets about the wrestling. However, AEW evolves. I don't think WWE is going to want MJF. Nah, they will. I don't think anything will stop them from wanting him, but I will say, you know, I talk about the idea that there are guys there who, you know, you, you get mad at people like, Oh, Britt Baker should have put her foot down about the tooth and nail match or other people. MJF should have put his foot down and said, I'm not working with Chris Jericho. Everything Chris Jericho touches has way too much stupid comedy and stupid humor that isn't funny to most people and is schlocky and bad. And he dragged MJF and now FTR into this. And look at what happens. Everyone ends up down at Chris Jericho's level. But here's the thing. You say, oh, they'll still want him. MJF should have put, my point was, MJF should put his foot down. As much as Britt Baker or anyone else, MJF should say, look. Yes. I'm the one guy who had serious heat, and then you got me doing all this stupid shit with Jericho. They ruined the illusion that was MJF starting last summer with the whole fucking thing. The whole fucking thing when he got involved with Jericho. But you say WWE would still want him. They proved on the, what we've been saying all along on the biography about Mick Foley, Vince does not see guys. Vince goes on other people's recommendation and said, maybe show me something or whatever, right? Anybody recommending MJF for a spot there in the future, what are they going to be able to show Vince? What are they going to be able to? He hasn't had a good match in over a year now. He hasn't done any of the things that made him different. What the fuck? Him and Jungle Boy was several months ago. No, that was longer than several months ago. No, could it? Go not? back, go look it up. Go look, he hasn't done much for well over a point year. Is, point is, what is, what are they going to show? It? Everything is a fucking comedy clusterfuck that Vince would roll his eyes and turn away from after 13 seconds. And who's going to be wanting to stick their nose out or their neck out Triple for H. this guy who is, have showed, has shown that he had a ton of talent and then was completely fucking trivialized by this comedy program that he's on and involved with. I don't think that's going to scare off WWE in the future because it can't. For a modern wrestling company to want modern talent, they're all going to do really, really stupid shit over and over again on the indies or as we've seen if they're signed to AEW or Impact or anywhere else. Everyone in the business, if you find someone that doesn't do stupid shit, then you got to be like, wow, when is he going to do stupid shit? But they all do it at this point. And MJF's as guilty as anyone else, but he's no different than anyone else. Valter is now the best wrestler in the world. Anyway, uh, there was a two count on the conference table. Uh, MJF tried to hit Jericho's bad arm with a hammer, but Jericho hit him in the head with a tra- plastic trash bucket, and he sold it like it was a fucking slapjack. And then Jericho threw MJF through a glass door. And MJF got a pap smear for color. But somehow later on, when he went into the arena, he had really good juice. So I don't know. Uh, And scene. Next, Sean Spears is being chased by... Who are the Inner Circle Motorcycle Club? Yeah, I don't know. That was new to me as well. They went to a (laughs) back... It's somewhere in the bowels of the building. And there's motorcycles revving up, and Spears looks, oh shit, and it's the Inner Circle Motorcycle Club consisting of three or four people on motorcycles. We don't know who the fuck they are, and they're going to chase Sean Spears. So they're chasing him, and they're catching him, and he's running, and he turns left and goes into a fucking closet. And the guys on the motorcycles, who are only 15 feet behind him, just go right straight past him. They weren't chasing him. They drove right past him. They saw where he was. And seen. So that was just in. The, I guess they paid for the guys on the motorcycles. So they had to get him in some kind of way. And then we see Jericho fighting 
MJF into the arena. They're in the bleachers, and I've at this point 30 minutes of this already. 30 minutes already. And then we see Sammy Guevara chasing Sean Spears into the arena with a golf cart. And they go into the ring in the arena. Imagine that. And I'm thinking, okay, at least they're giving these poor beleaguered fans after they've been sitting there watching this hoo-ha on a screen for 30 minutes, they're going to have everybody come from wherever and get in the ring and have a big 10 way to bring the people up and then do a finish. At least that, there you go. Guess what they didn't do, Brian? They didn't have everybody come in and give them a big 10 way and a big finish. Sammy and fucking Spears got in the ring and then Guevara does a springboard off the top. Spears had the chair and baseball bats him with the chair and gets a two count. And then they continue on doing stuff in the ring. Sammy does a double fucking 360, a 720 or a 840 or 930 or however many numbers splash right on top of Sean Spears, one of the stiffest things I've ever seen. Boom. One, two, three. Where was everybody else? Where was all the heels? None of the other guys were even in the arena until after the finish. Here comes the inner circle to come in and hug Sammy. And the other heels are nowhere and never seen again. They didn't make it to the fucking arena. What happened? This was much worse than the last one, and I don't even know that I would have considered that to be possible, and definitely longer, and this show ended up at three hours and 58 minutes. Fuck, the fucking original director's cut of intolerance is easier to watch than this fucking thing. That's for all you silent movie buffs in the audience. Where did that, where'd they all go? I don't know. And by the way, I told you, you said they're going to have to do this in front of the live fans. I said, there's no way they're going to do any of this. Uh, of course, they did the ending, but I knew everything else was just going to be taped in advance. I didn't know about stunt coordinators or four days of taping. <laughs> what the? <sighs> Nobody in that arena was pissed off asking for their money back like they did over the fucking popcorn fart of an exploding ring or the one one match show where they taped everything else and made them watch it? Was anybody pissed off that, holy fuck, we don't even get to, we watch this entire thing on the screen and then don't even get to see everybody in the ring at the end of it? I'm t Elmer's glue and ice cream. There you go. And like you said earlier, I can't believe if they knew they were going to have live fans there like this, I can't believe they just did war games the way they did. It makes no sense in any <laughs> respect of the world. Doing war games before this, doing war games right before live fans come back in, this whole feud between Inner Circle and Pinnacle, all done so poorly. I guess Stadium Stampede is going to be their annual joke of a match. I'm sure we'll see the next one next year. We'll see if Chris Jericho is a part of it. Well, I'm sure he will be. Well, we don't know. Maybe Fozzie will really pick up and take off this time around. And I'm sure we are we are not going to get rid of Twinkle Toes or Jericho or the Cucamonga Kids. Cody likes to go away on his own. Apparently, we you know we'll I'm sure not see as much of him as these others. But think about FTR. When is the last time FTR, the best working team in professional wrestling, had a tag team match on Dynamite? But we got to see the goddamn Bucks do the same shit every week over and over when nobody gives a fuck because they're the executive vice presidents and they get to be on television. I think the last FTR match we saw was the three-way, or three-way, the six-man match with Spears as the partner. But we've never even seen, I mean, if we have, I don't even remember it, which is part of the problem. We've never even seen FTR and Ortiz and Santana have a match, have we? No. No, that would have been too obvious. And that might have actually made Santana and Ortiz look better because they'd be in there with somebody that can fucking lead them and do something. 
But no, we're we're going to see the same small children doing their cheerleading routines over and over. And whenever they hire somebody that can go in the ring and and perform and work and do it the way it's supposed to be done, they make the other guys look bad. So they immediately marginalize and minimize those talents as much as possible. If the fucking screwy booking hadn't done it first. So we'll see plenty of Lucha Brothers and we'll see plenty of Cucamonga kids, but FTR? Fuck no, they're making us look bad. <sighs> anyway, closing thoughts on double or nothing. I'm picking nothing. How about you? It was okay for AEW. I mean, some of those matches were no better than anything you see on Dynamite every week. I'm not a fan of the Stadium Stampede match. Didn't like last year's. Certainly didn't like this year's. I don't know. It was, you know, it was I enjoyed it just because of the fans. I mean, it's such a, such a weird thing to say, but I enjoyed this event just for the novelty of having a wrestling event with actual fans there. Well, that'll wear off because once we get used to the fans again, we know the matches are all going to look the same. So there's going to be no difference here pretty soon. You know, based on what you were saying before about FTR and maybe there's a few other people that they may be happy, but they're certainly being misused. You got to think one of these days, some of these guys will get together and say, you know, I've really had enough. We had a lot of high hopes here. I believed a lot of the things Tony and Cody said, but maybe it's time I get some legal representation. You mean to tell me that you think that the most incredible crusader for justice in the legal world today would stoop, would stoop to representing these people who have brought this on themselves no i say to you brian last that the the incredible legal crusader that we all know and love he only works for and helps the underdogs the people who have been the victims the victims of someone else's malfeasance and mistreatment these people didn't bring it on themselves they didn't bring it on themselves to have big companies leave cancer causing agents in their groundwater they didn't bring it on themselves when 3m gave them bad and defective earplugs and hurt the hearing of service members. They were the innocent victims in this. That's who our man represents, the man who represents the innocent and the weak and the poor among us. The one, the only. Call Steven P. To the rest. Or as Lior likes to say, he will sue your ass. <laughs> but nevertheless, newlawoffice.com, Stephen P. New, 888-692-8084. Did you know you can call 888-692-8084 from anywhere and not get charged for it because Stephen does not want to take your money. He wants to get your money. If you've been the victim of one of these large major corporations that has disregarded your health and safety or that of your family or friends, and you need representation, you need to know where to turn. Turn to Stephen P. New, because you can get even with Stephen, and he will take care of your issues. We've talked about so many of these uh, lawsuits and these class action suits and these things starting to go to court, starting to take place now. Stephen is getting a lot of people compensation for the damage and the the ill that's been done to him, he can do the same thing for you or people that you know. Many of the referrals for some of these earplug cases and the talcum powder cases and so many more have come from the cult of Cornet listeners. And also, don't forget about the bash in Beckley at the Raleigh County Armory this coming August in Beckley, West Virginia. New law office and official sponsor of the All-Star Wrestling ASW Extravaganza in Beckley. I think it's going to be their first time there in that particular arena. And uh, we will be there in spirit, wishing Gary Damron and all the folks at All-Star Wrestling well. And we'll have more on that big event coming up over the summer. But uh, once again, newlawoffice.com, 
888-692-8084. The consigliere of the cult of Cornette will bring the legal hammer of justice down on whatever cockroach has been crawling <laughs> around your feet. That's right. That's right. Sounds like Gary Damron was named by Big Jim Hess. Damron! Damron! Anyway. I... The old warp your head off, hold. 